This is Damon Dash, and this is the Dash Diabetes Network. I might not be a doctor, but I'm definitely in a doctor's state of mind. I want to introduce the person that makes the Afreza inhaler, the man himself, Mike Mankind. So, Mike, one thing I need to understand, you know, you're a businessman, right? Yep. And um, this, this product, to me, has been life-changing just because I got my A1 where it needs to be and I don't have to take so many needles. How come the rest of the world doesn't know about this? How long is this, and this is just an obvious question, how long has this product been out? Yeah, so Fresa was approved and launched about two years ago last month. And uh, you know, one of the challenges you know, of any product is awareness. And, and so you know, I can tell you if we asked 100 diabetics today, you know, people who have diabetes, are you aware that there's an inhaled insulin today? 90% mm -hmm. of them would say not even aware. But I feel like it wasn't your crew that rolled it out. We did not roll it out, that's correct. Somebody so, else rolled so, it out. So another large pharmaceutical company had launched uh, Fresa right. originally, right. and uh, Mankind was, was lucky enough to get it back last year, and we relaunched it ourselves so they, a little less than a year ago. Now, you weren't a part of it. I was not a part of it originally, no. But then what happened there? Yeah, so so my, my background's in pharmacy, and I've worked in the uh, pharmaceutical industry almost 20, 22 years now. Right. And, uh, you know, so for me, it's about turning around brands that you believe in. And, and so when I saw Mankind getting a Fresa back, I, I reached out to the CEO. So, so, so basically, you look at companies that you like, yep. and you get them up to speed, and you get them where they need to be if you believe in them. I believe in them. I got to believe in what I do. So that's what you, so they got with you, and you got with them. Yep and you decided this is something that you have to You need for. someone that can, can build the infrastructure fast enough to get this thing back off the ground. Okay. And uh, so we joined last, last March, and uh, we've been building a team ever since, and we just relaunched uh, a larger team in 2017, and uh, we're out there full force, so we should start to see the results finally of a, of a real effort of marketing this product. As a diabetic, I want to know every innovation. I want to be the one to be able to make that choice. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Or what's better for me, just because it's not better for someone else. You okay. understand what I'm saying? And so, so what do you, what, how do you think, how are you going to overcome that? Well, I think the, the, the challenge is doctors have to get their own experience, right? So, so this, this drug was studied in, in detail in over 3,000 patients, 60-some trials. Uh, there's a lot of data behind Afreza, you know, a lot of, lot of investment, over almost $2 billion have been invested. In the Two drug. billion? Two billion. So a lot of investment in the company and the drug and the technology. And, and so that's, that's a longer story another day, but, but I think in the end, um, you know, one of the challenges I think we face in the U.S. healthcare system, and you're not unique to your situation, is doctors are busy. They spend seven to ten minutes with a patient. You come in, they check you, they say, you're doing good, fine. And when you're used to prescribing the same damn insulin for 20 years, yeah. are you going to change what you're doing? Are you no. going to go that extra mile? Are you going to think? Uh, they don't have time to, to read journals mm -hmm. and read you clinical might, data. You might want to start hitting the schools or something, you know, like because the old school doctors are going to be hard to change, but they're not going to be there, no disrespect to them, but so much longer. Yeah. But the new doctors, yeah. the millennial doctors, are going to want new and advanced ways to do it and, you know, get them used to it early. So, you know, medical schools are, are guarded amongst the residents, as you could imagine, in doctor training. So they, there's a lot of firewalls between the industry and them. But, but I think in general, if you ask me what we're doing, we are getting into the fellows. We are getting into the endocrinology field. Your doctor, you were probably one of the first patients they tried it on. Right. I, was, I she, think I was the first. I, I, yeah, I didn't want to say that, but you were. Yeah. Um, and she said, if it works for him, then I'm going to use it in others because... I was the guinea pig. You know, he wanted to try it. But the I black think guy. He, I always use the black guy. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't support that. Uh, <laughs> just to be clear, but uh, no, no. She said, "Look, if it's working for Damon, you know, he, he every, he's tried everything. It's not working. Then I'll think about it from other patients, right? But that's what happens. A patient has to fight da for Dame, their own so health. So basically, Dane Dash has to walk in and approve it and show no, that it people works. People got to fight for their health, and it's a shame. But, well, but the here, thing is, the thing is, it happened. Here's the statistics yes. today: <laughs> yeah, two, funny, two out of three patients in the entire U.S. are not less than seven. I, I can right. imagine so think I, about was, I was one of those two that weren't. 41 new drugs in a decade, billions of dollars spent on new drugs, and we have not really moved the needle. And, and part of this is doctors being comfortable dosing people appropriately, right? right. Whether it's my drug or so, another so drug. So basically they don't, they, don't know, they don't know enough about it to say anything that's really factual. Like they've they not can't even tried it. it. But they can't, but it's hard for a doctor to say, I know this works because a patient you know, says it works if there isn't a patient that says it works. Right. So, they needed someone to, to give it credibility. Right. And then when they see it, then they're like, wow. And we, so, we, you know, we, what we see is, that, you know, people like yourself, you walk in, they're like, wow, they dropped three points in six weeks. Right. That's a lot. Right. Well, aren't you supposed to be less than seven? Okay. But like, I just talked to somebody today in Louisiana, and, and she's on 15 units of injectable insulin today. Mm. And she's switching over. And she's excited. She can't wait to, to get started. Um, and she's a nurse in diabetes, and she sees it every oh, day. Oh, perfect. So she's like, I don't understand why my docs haven't used this. Yeah. 
And we went there and to your point, the doc said, I didn't heard of this. These are endocrinologists who treat patients who, and they're in a hospital setting that doesn't allow drug reps in. And they say, I never heard of this. How sad is that? They have thousands of patients. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. That's part of the challenge in healthcare today, right? I, I, I truly believe if we work with the payers who do the reimbursement, we work with the providers who provide care and us as a pharmaceutical industry, if we put the patient front and center, we're going to help a lot of people. Absolutely. And, and to me, you know, as long as people are taking um, the right medication that gets them to gold, that's important. But if you're not a goal, if you're not below seven, you got to take action on your health, right? That, that's right. got to be the goal, right? Is, and we know two out of three people in this country are not even at goal. And so I don't care if you're a type one or a type two patient living with diabetes, you know, we can, we've tried diet, we've tried exercise, that doesn't work for everybody, right? So how do we, you know, you know try, try that, but also give you, if you're fighting for your health, you're paying all this money, at least give you some right to, to, to get yourself in control. If you want to learn more about being a diabetic and being cool while you're diabetic and a lifestyle of a diabetic, check out the Dash Diabetes Network. Holla back. To those with diabetes, mealtime is really time to think about insulin. When do I prepare? Where do I inject? But Afrezza lets you inhale your insulin when food arrives, even unexpectedly. So you can be spontaneous and not rely solely on injections. Afrezza is a rapid-acting inhaled insulin used to control adult diabetes. Afrezza can cause serious side effects, including sudden lung problems and low potassium. Afrezza is not for patients with chronic lung disease, such as asthma or COPD. Tell your doctor if you smoke, recently stopped smoking, have ever had kidney or liver problems, a history of lung cancer, or if you are pregnant or breastfeeding. Most common side effects are low blood sugar, cough, and sore throat. Severe low blood sugar can be fatal. Do not replace long-acting insulin with Afrezza. Afrezza is not for use to treat diabetic ketoacidosis. Do not take Afrezza if you are allergic to insulin. Get some dessert. Talk to your doctor before changing your Afrezza dose. Blood sugar may need to be checked more frequently. Ask your doctor if Afrezza inhalable insulin is right for you.